So I wanted to take a few minutes with this video to talk about three interesting PlayStation 5 stories. And if you could hit that like button on the video, thank you to those that do it. And as always, it's very much appreciated. Now, the stories I wanted to dive into today includes Sony potentially locking another exclusive title. Sony could potentially have a no streaming handheld thanks to recent news and a new announcement is potentially on the way for Final Fantasy 16 thanks to a recent leak. First, do you have an iOS or Android phone? I haven't asked this question in a very long time at this point, but I'm curious if things have changed since the last time. The last time I think we talked about this, most of you had Android devices, which I guess makes sense. There's more Android devices out there in the world. So comment below. Do you have an iOS or Android device? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, diving into the first story of the video, a new announcement coming very soon. Reading from Push Square, the long-promised playable demo for Final Fantasy 16 will obviously have to release in the near future since the full game is out on the 22nd of June. And as spotted by users on Reddit, the demo now shows up on the PlayStation Store, specifically if you're browsing via mobile. We weren't able to replicate this ourselves, but it's possible that you would need to have pre-ordered the game for the demo listing to appear. Naturally, the fact that the demos on Sony's PlayStation Store service suggests that it's ready to go, but we'd still bet on it being released during or after the Final Fantasy 16 pre-launch event that's happening on the 11th of June. The timing just makes too much sense. So I actually was <laughs> I actually wasn't aware there was a pre-launch event for Final Fantasy 16. Uh, we We've gotten to see so much of this game at this point. I'm not sure what they're going to do at this event 11 days before the launch of the game. I think most people who want the game are already going to pick it up from what we've seen so far, which is a lot. Uh, for me, I've been interested since I saw gameplay a while ago at this point, and it reminded me of Devil May Cry. I was in the bag then. Regardless, this looks like the time we'll get this demo. June 11th, they'll probably drop it during the celebration. Also, remember that if you play the demo, your progress can be carried over to the final game. So, really, this is our early access to the game 11 days before launch. And this isn't the only exclusive Sony has locked, apparently. And that's the next story in the video. I made a promise to my friends, and it is they who will give me the strength to end your reign. So before we get to the potential PlayStation no streaming portable device, uh, the second story of the video is about Sony locking another PlayStation 5 exclusive. Reading from WCCF Tech, back in 2020, a massive leak revealed that Square Enix may be working on a Final Fantasy IX remake. While the Japanese publisher has yet to announce this remake, the fact that every other title mentioned in this massive leak eventually got announced and released seems to suggest that this remake is real and coming, although it may not release on every platform. Speaking on the Risa Era forums, I'm a hero too who has provided proof to the moderators of the message board that they have access to information not available to the public, stated that they have seen the remake and that it has Sony written all over it, which doesn't sound too surprising considering how tight Sony and Square Enix have always been and how tighter they have become lately with titles like Final Fantasy 7 Remake and Final Fantasy 16 being timed PlayStation exclusives. The insider also confirmed confirmed that the Final Fantasy IX Remake is at least two years away and that it's not coming to the Nintendo Switch, which seems to suggest that it will be more than a simple visual overhaul of the classic PlayStation release or a remake in the vein of the Secret of Mana Dawn of Mana remakes. So basically what's being said here is that this could very well be a remake like Final Fantasy VII Remake was to the original. The Secret of Mana and Dawn of Mana remakes are essentially visual overhauls, for example. It's they're still the same games as they were before. Final Fantasy VII, the original title, and Final Fantasy VII Remake are pretty much different games. If you've played uh, the new one and you've seen the old one, you can tell these two are very different. The original was a top-down uh, turn-based RPG, while the remake is a third-person semi-action title that has real-time combat, but you could still select actions for your team characters controlling the whole group it's it's a nice blend of what was there before and how to modernize it for the for the new era of, of gamers so if this thing is actually two years away if final fantasy uh, 9 remake is two years away i wonder if it'll get revealed sometime this year or maybe next year i'm not a big final fantasy fan but i did enjoy 7 remake i'm getting rebirth as well if this is like final fantasy 7 remake i'll probably be getting 
getting it too. But you guys let me know if you're interested in getting a Final Fantasy IX remake or not. Let me know down in the comments below. I'm trying so hard to find you. Sorry. Feel like I failed you. And now diving into the final story of the video, a no-streaming PlayStation portable device. Reading from PlayStation Lifestyle, Qualcomm opened to working with PlayStation on handheld system. Semiconductor company Qualcomm says it's open to working with PlayStation and Nintendo on handheld gaming devices. Speaking at Computex 2023, the company's senior vice president, Alex Katuzian, revealed that Qualcomm has already been in talks with Sony, but didn't say whether they discussed the upcoming Project Q or ideas for the the future. Keep expectations of a PlayStation Portable or a PlayStation Vita successor in check because Qualcomm is referring to mobile and streaming devices. A lot of console game companies want these handhelds, Katuzian said at Computex 2023. They're not necessarily high-end graphics capable devices, but they want to keep all those mobile gamers in their own ecosystem. Qualcomm indicated its interest in going after the handheld market and partnering with console manufacturers. On its talks with Sony and Nintendo, Qualcomm said that both both console makers are interested in having handheld ca gaming capabilities, so obviously they would reach out and talk to us. Katuzian didn't say what those talks entailed, but it's possible that Sony sought advice on Project Q. So it's funny that he mentions Nintendo wanting handheld gaming capabilities. I'm assuming he's referring to the mobile space because obviously Nintendo platforms don't run Android, for example. They run their own OS. So after reading this, it seems like this is probably for Project Q on the Sony side. If you look at one of the other streaming only devices, you have the Logitech G Cloud, which uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. I think Project Q could also potentially use a Qualcomm chip, which means this thing could also potentially have its own OS, which could also be Android based. I don't know what else it would be. It's probably going to be Android based. Remember, Sony has also now acquired mobile developers to produce mobile titles for their major franchises. The only studio they have right now is Savage Game Studios, but this will obviously grow. If they have their own dedicated mobile device, they can just direct mobile gamers to this thing instead of anything else like the Backbone, for example. Also, if this thing does have a Qualcomm chip and is Android based, then it should be able to stream other services like Xbox Game Pass or any other service that has an app on Android, or even potentially also allow you to install emulators like a PS2 emulator, which would be very funny because you could play most PS2 games on this thing, but you can't play them on the PlayStation 5. That, that would be pretty entertaining. And if that is also the case, then this thing could be potentially more expensive than we thought if it has all of this, a Qualcomm uh, chip on OS all of that of course this could also all be for a potential future handheld device and not this thing the project Q this thing might actually just straight boot into remote play and nothing else project Q could just boot into remote play and you're already connected to your PlayStation 5 and that's all it is there's no OS of its own and maybe that's how it works but you guys let me know if you'd get project Q if you could install emulators like a PlayStation 2 emulator uh, along with being able to stream your PlayStation 5 titles let me know down in the comments below and if you guys did enjoy this video please hit that like button as it always helps to subscribe if you're new I got new videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday and now I'll check you guys out on the next one and welcome back to the after show this is the part of the video where we have a little fun down in the comments below if you're old welcome back if you're new welcome for today's thing what i want you guys to do is to body obliterate destroy and overall harass the comment section with next week is fest week summer games fest is next week on thursday the event goes live and starts the whole thing i'm excited to see what they have to show sony is potentially going to be over there and have something of their own in terms maybe of a trailer or two probably death stranding or something else we'll see For either way i'm excited to see what games are shown off then if you are as well destroy the comment section with next week is fest week and i'll definitely heart those comments like i always do because i appreciate everybody who stays at the end of my videos and now i'll check you guys out on the next one